Hello people of the interwebs, Milo here. This is part two of the Voron Trident build series. Let's get to it. So you built your frame. It's done. You're happy with it. Now, there are some things you need to know before you move on to step two. Some things I wish I would have known and that uh, frankly, I should probably let you know right now. I don't plan on talking about mods until we're done with the build, but this, this is one of those parts where I really feel like I should mention one mod in particular that if you don't do now, it's just going to be harder to do later on. The Z lead screws are going to be installed fairly soon in the build. You need to decide if you're going to do the inverted electronics bay or not. Me personally, I did put the inverted electronics bay on my printer and I do not regret it. It is so good. Only issue is I did it after the fact. So I highly recommend you make that decision now. You print the relatively small set of parts that you're going to need for it. It's all it's only the three uh, Z motor mounts. And uh, if you are going to do it, this is the perfect time because otherwise you're going to have to partially disassemble your build and put it back together. So consider that before moving forward. This video series is not really meant to be a replacement to the manual. The manual is your gospel, right? The entire time you're going to be building, you need to have that manual open somewhere, whether it be on a computer, tablet, phone, does not matter. What's important is that you're following every step of the manual. And if you're following the manual, the next step would be to install the linear rails. This is fairly straightforward, but we do need to talk about a couple things, namely lubrication. Yep, lube. We're talking about lube. <laughs> So you need to choose what type of lubrication to use on your rails and rail carriages. I went with super lube on my build and PTFE grease. They recommend mobile one. You could check the Dvor on Discord, you could check Reddit, you could check all, that's a topic of discussion. But generally speaking, if you want a quieter setup, so to speak, you would use like a super lube or like the mobile one grease. I really like PTFE grease. In fact, when I re-grease my entire build, I'm going to be using the spray on PTFE grease. I feel like I have better results and smoother operation. I would have to apply it a little bit more frequency, fre frequent, frequently, but it's, it's fine. As long as the machine runs well, that's all I like. It's also easier to apply. I recommend you get the STLs for the Voron tap. Even if you're not gonna use it, there's one file in there in particular that's a carriage tool that helps you take the carriage out from the linear rail. Highly recommend you use that because you can take the carriage out, take the tool out of the carriage, you grease it up, put the tool back into the carriage and then slide it back into the rail. It is so nice, but the only place I've ever been able to find this STL file is on the Voron tap collection of files. It's not on printables. It's not on Thinkverse. It's nowhere else to be found only on the STL files for the tap. So consider getting that if you're going to go with pretty much any lubing method. It makes it way easier. I will say that if you are going to lube your rails with conventional grease like the super lube or the mobile one that Nero has a really good video on this you don't even have to take out the carriage the linear rails have holes in them and when the carriage goes over those holes you can take a syringe full of that uh, grease put the carriage under the hole you're gonna be squirting the grease into and then just like pump it full of grease until you see grease come out of the sides of the carriage at that point, it's properly uh, lubed up. Just slide the carriage along the rail a couple times so it can distribute properly, and you're good to go. In the manual, you're gonna see that some parts have a little red heart with a Voron logo etched into them. That means the part is an accent part. It just helps you identify them better. If you went through the printed forward program, those guys are really good about organizing all your parts in terms of like steps. So all your idler assembly slash gantry parts are going to be together. The, uh, for example, the 
bed parts or not bed parts but the cabling parts are gonna be together it's, it's gonna be very nice if you printed this yourself i highly recommend you organize them if you haven't already done so notice a trend here how we're gonna keep on coming back to organizing and that's because you need to identify your parts quickly if you want the build to be not only as nice as possible but just to not be frustrating i can't imagine you being like 80 percent through your build and then noticing that you can't find that like one bracket to mount your raspberry pi onto your onto your system it would be horrible so just do yourself a favor if your parts aren't already organized make sure they're organized and even if they are organized just do a quick sanity check make sure that you have all the parts you're supposed to because the printed forward guys are also people i didn't have my order wrong in fact my provider gave me extra parts in some cases i don't know if this is common or not or maybe it's part of the program but i had like three different versions of the stealth burner air thing and i had also three different versions of the tap parts that was very nice of him and i mean like three different kits of the part of the tap parts so I highly recommend the Vorum Printed Forward program. If you don't have a means to print your parts and you don't like the color options that they have in the Printed Forward program, that's where this channel sponsor comes in. PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop to turning your projects into reality. They offer a multitude of services including 3D printing, CNC machining, and PCB fabrication. They offer both populated and unpopulated boards, as well as a multitude of 3D printing materials, some of which include ABS, PLA, and TPU. They also have a shared projects category, where open source projects by the community are easily accessible for all. Thank you PCBWay for being the channel sponsor. Okay, so you're going to start with your AB motor mounts. This part is incredibly simple. You're, this is the, I believe the first part you're going to be actually using heat set inserts with. Honestly, it's not that complicated. People make these very complicated jigs to like make sure the heat set inserts are in perfectly. And yes, you do need to pay attention. If you put in a heat set insert wrong, it'll cause way more problems because things are not going to be aligned. But the parts are designed in such a way that it's almost hard for them to not go in straight. When I post some of the projects I've been working on, you'll notice that it, they use a lot of heat set inserts and it's because they're cheap and they work really well. But the thing is, they're not made like to the same accuracy or precision. Uh, it really depends on which vendor you go with and most of the time it's gonna be AliExpress because they're the cheapest. So yeah, um, just make sure, I mean if you're buying a kit, chances are Heat set inserts work fine. I got my Formbot kit and those heat set inserts came in and they worked wonderfully. I have no complaints. But I also modded my build quite a bit during the build process and I had to get more. So some of them didn't match up. I had to send some back. Keep that in mind. Don't overthink it. I will recommend the soldering iron tools, the tips that help you put them in especially if this is the first time you're working with heat set inserts they just make the process more comfortable nicer but they're not needed at all if you just have a soldering iron tip and you don't want to spend the extra 20 bucks to get a set of those tips then you'll be fine and you certainly don't need to build a whole rig for it i personally think those things are overrated but yeah uh, do what you will with that information if you're happy it's all that matters back to the motor mounts I think they only need one heat set insert each, put the heat set inserts in, set them aside. They're gonna cover it later in the manual. What you will need is to put together your belt tensioner assemblies or your idler, let me see what these things are called. They are called, yeah, they're definitely called the idler assemblies. So you're going to work with those. I gotta be completely honest, this part is completely uncomfortable. There's no good way I found of doing this. The manual makes it look so easy. It's not, it, it takes a couple tries. It's normally a point of contention. Uh, just do your best. Try to throw some music in the background, have some coffee, tea, whatever suits your boat. No, try and stick away from the alcohol because it's only gonna make this build harder. 
but yeah, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, you'll be you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Now, when you are assembling the AB motor mounts, that's a step right after. It's fairly straightforward. It's just a lot of bearings. My bearings came pre-lubed with the Formbot kit. I'm gonna be calling out Formbot a lot, and it's because I really like their kit. If you're just buying a base Voron, it's hard to beat their kit. I haven't had the experience of an LDO kit. I've heard they're S tier, but they're also considerably more expensive and understandably so because they come with some very nice to haves. But unfortunately, I didn't have the money for it at the time. So I got the form box kit and I do not regret it at all. Uh, I'll mention, I'll talk more about the form box kit as we move on, but just know it's if price to performance is very good if you can if they source in your area sorry if they sell if a form box kit is available in your area highly recommend you at least consider it now putting the idlers on the motors is a little janky to say the least but they have a tool and if you see me looking down it's because i'm actually looking at the manual but they have a tool for this you pretty much just have to use a little tool and it makes the experience much easier. Verify the manual. If you can find a YouTube video, check it out. Again, we're running a marathon here, not a race. So just make sure that every part you, every part of this build you do correctly and you will have a really good time. Now, here comes the mounting of the gantry or the AB motor mount slash idlers. Mounting the idlers, pretty straightforward. They have rolling spring nuts and so do the idlers to be honest. Uh, sorry, the AB motor mounts. So simple as can be to install them. No issues there. You are going to need to support your AB motor mounts once it's already on the extrusion. You're gonna need to support that with the Z vertical rod thing that's in the back. There are two little plastic pieces that look a little asymmetrical, so to speak. You need to use those two little asymmetrical pieces to join the AB motor bar with the Z bar. Just please pay close attention to how that's supposed to go because you can mess that up. And if I remember correctly, it's to compensate for some sort of thing. I'm gonna throw a little clip of how mine ended up looking. It works fine. Just kind of orient yours that way because this is one of the parts in the manual that was kind of confusing to see which type of orientation that was supposed to be in. Okay, after you're done installing the AB motor mounts with the beam that they go on in the back and everything, and the idlers are in the front, just do a quick visual inspection. Make sure that the things that are supposed to be 90 degrees still are 90 degrees. Retighten everything if you have to. Don't tighten too much. Keep in mind that you got plastic parts here, so you can damage them, but in general just make sure things are like pretty snug you know you don't want anything to be loose so yeah use uh use your own judgment in this regard all right so now you're gonna flip your entire printer upside down and you're gonna install the linear rails for the gantry linear rails are simple to install after you have them lubed up all you have to worry about when installing the rails is that do you put in the correct amount of hardware and you're using the right type of bolts. It's gonna be M3 eighths. I just, I just checked, I'm sure it's correct this time around. One thing I will say about the manual, I kinda wish the manual had a, just a section on every page with exactly how many of each part you're gonna need for that step. So for example, and this is just for any of you that if by any chance someone who's worked on the manuals watching this in the page where you're showing the step just have a little legend or section on one of the corners that tells you exactly how many for example m38 bolts i'm gonna need and how many m3 spring nuts i'm gonna need because i'm sitting there counting it and it's kind of annoying it's not like a big deal but i'm sure I'm not the only one that's thought of this, and I'm sure you guys have thought of this too. It's probably a more difficult process than I'm envisioning it, but if it's an option, it would be a very nice to have. One last thing when installing the rails, just keep in mind that there is 
this plastic little tool that helps you align it with relation to the extrusion. If you have it, use it. It's just easier because you can take your time bolting your stuff in. Well, I guess you can take your time bolting it all in whether you have that or not, but it just helps assure that you're gonna be 100% aligned. In other words, if you have it, use it. If you don't, no biggie, just pay extra close attention. Now we're gonna install the Z motors along with the motor mounts. Again, this is that part where I told you that if you're gonna be doing the mod, the inverted electronics bay mod, you need to get different Z motor mounts. They look the same, but they don't have as wide a lip. And this is very beneficial because in the future when you're gonna be wiring and working on your 3D printer, you don't have to flip it over. This is an expensive machine, it's a heavy machine. So if you can avoid flipping it over at all, that's much better. This section is super straightforward. You're just gonna install more linear rails and you're going to install the Z motor mounts. Super, super simple. It's gonna be wash, rinse and repeat with this kind of stuff. You're gonna roll in the nuts, you're gonna put the mount itself, you're gonna bolt it in and that's about it. Pay attention to the part that actually mounts to the carriage block of the linear rail in the back of your printer because you're gonna have a cable chain going to that. So you're gonna need to identify which type of cable chain you have. There are generic cable chains and there are what I believe are IGUS chains. The difference is just like one bolt. Luckily, the Voron people thought about this and they include both the IGUS and the generic variants of this mount. All you have to do is look at it, count how many holes you see on your drag chains if you have a kit or if you order them yourself and use the appropriate mount. Man, this is wild. That's not like my fifth grade teacher. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. This is, it's gonna keep on coming back to that, really. I like how I say pay attention, but I had to disassemble my build multiple times to correct mistakes. And I went with a kit, man. That was, should have been straightforward. Double check the bolts that you're gonna be using. Bolts may have, it could say, for example, M3 or M38. So you know it's an M3 bolt that's eight millimeters long. Fairly straightforward, right? Well, not quite. They have a denomination at the very front. That's the type of head it has. So it'll be like B. After you're done with the lead screws and with the linear rails, you can move on to uh, putting the actual motors in. Super simple and straightforward. Uh, they pretty much only go one way. Pay attention to which way the cable is facing. Separate motors have a side where the connection goes in or out of. Make sure that you are pointing that in such a way that you can clean up your cable management nicely after the fact. You don't wanna be pointing that cable side towards like a frame or something like that. The gantry is, the gantry itself is really straightforward. Realistically, it's not gonna be anything new. It's gonna be the same thing you've already been doing. You're putting a linear rail down. You've already known how to do that. It's actually gonna be easier than what you were doing because you don't have to deal with a huge frame. You're just dealing with one beam, one extrusion. So again, put the linear rail on, follow the instructions. It should be business as usual with this kind of stuff. When you do mount it onto your printer, you're going to go and do gantry squaring. So basically that just means that you're gonna move the gantry from its most back position, from its most back position to its most forward position. And this, this is where you check if you did a good job with squaring your frame. You want to make sure that the movement is smooth. All right, if you lubed your linear rails correctly, if your frame is square, this should be no problem. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put the X carriage in the center-ish, more or less, and you're just, you're just gonna move it back and move it forward, make sure that the motion is nice and smooth and it's not snagging onto anything or you're not, you're not having to fight it in any way. If you could do that, you're in good shape. And I think that's it for this video because it's already getting a little long. I might have to add an additional video to this. Either way, these are fun to record, so I don't mind. Uh, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.